I have done it. I have finished War and Peace, and I never have to read it again. So let me do a review. And to be nice, and not that War and Peace needs it, I'm going to start out with the good points of the book and why I think people should read it, even though I'm saying I do not want to reread it. It's an important book, but one of the um, things, not just because a, you know a lot of people have read it, it's been very influential, which is true, it has inspired me to at least go back and learn more about the Napoleonic Wars, and this is something we forget, is how, what well, if we ever knew it to begin with, in the U.S. particularly, because the War of 1812, we were on the borders of it. Uh, the core of it really didn't touch the U.S. too much. We got some goodies out of them. Um, that was nice. But uh, the Napoleonic Wars shaped Europe for quite some time. Um, War and Peace was published in 1869. It said at the end of the audiobook. I didn't look it up. Um, so that's like 50 years plus after uh, the events in War and Peace. And for a lot of the 19th century, with regards to geopolitics, and then of course there were revolutions going on, 1848 is notorious, but uh, a variety of them um, proceeded through the century. Anyway, it's good to have kind of a gut feel of what it would have felt like in Russia uh, to be in the middle of that Napoleonic invasion and how Napoleon in the 19th century um, as an example is kind of how Hitler had been used as an example in the 20th century. So we know World War One and World War II especially shaping 20th century geopolitics, the Napoleonic Wars had a huge impact. So that's one big reason. Um, but you know, and also you get a, a feel for the Russian society, high society at the time. You do get some of the info on the peasants and the serfs, but that's not really a huge part of the book. Okay, so why don't I like the book in terms of I don't want to read it again? Because it's not the length. I love long books. I love Dickens. Um, I love Crime and Punishment. I love uh, Brothers Karamazov. I have no problem with long books. And uh, Tolstoy is actually pretty good at keeping the action going and keeping interest, what's going to happen next, this, that, and the other. Um, thinking about it for a while, at its heart, is because it didn't make me laugh. Now, I know this is going to sound weird. Oh, we're in peace. You were expecting to laugh? Well, at least the peace parts. But more to the point, um, Crime and Punishment and Brothers Karamazov make me laugh a lot. Now, Dickens doesn't always make me laugh, but I at least smile. And it, it relates to my next part. I couldn't care about any of the characters because it wasn't clear to me that the author cared about any of the characters. Tolstoy, I don't know, people like Pierre and he's a nice guy, but that's about the only one you can find a, kind of feel good for, but it's more of, there's some kind of distance from the characters perhaps. And I don't think it's because they're aristocrats mainly. Um, a couple of the characters are almost Dickensian, but they are bit parts and they come in and they may have been, you know, they may have had more interest, but, you know, he kills off characters in the book. I don't care. I mean, there was one death. I, I guess you're supposed to feel sad about it. Not really. Um, and Tolstoy didn't really do any of that work. I have no interest in reading Anna Karenina now. <laughs> I didn't really have interest before. Um, so, you know, this is one of the great classics, of the Western tradition. Um, I think... It's going to inspire me to read some more Napoleonic era stuff, uh, history, as well as literature. Um, yeah, that's part, I, I do a lot of 19th century British literature reading, um, but not so much in terms of, uh, you know, more translated works. I have been getting more into Russian literature. Uh, I've not been too picky about translations of late. And I have another book project I have in mind for 2019, and I will talk about that in another video. So War and Peace, it's like your broccoli. It's good for you to eat, but you might not want to do it too often. If I ever reread War and Peace, it will just be in bits. I love the parts of Pierre in Moscow after everyone's really abandoned it and there's fires and Napoleon is invading. So I really, really like that part, but it's more of vignettes. It's very 
difficult to like any person in the plot. Eh, I don't know. Eh. Um, the war parts were my favorite parts. So, okay, I'm going to be rereading some other stuff later and uh, War and Peace. I never have to read it again.